What's going on, guys? We've got a lot to cover today. Social Security proposal for $2,400 extra in checks has been expanded and reintroduced in Congress. And in the next four days, Social Security checks of up to $4,555 will be going out to millions in four days. We're going to go into all the details on all of this. And also what the average net worth for Americans ages 65 through 74, we have a lot to cover today. President Biden's administration has promised Social Security recipients an extra $200 per month or an extra $2,400 per year. Um, where is it? Well, we're going to talk about the latest updates on Social Security in today's video. If you guys are new to the channel, please do your boy a favor. Drop a quick like for the video. Also consider subscribing to the channel. I would totally, totally appreciate it, guys. So first up, let's go ahead and talk about the Social Security proposal for $2,400 in extra checks, which has been expanded and reintroduced in Congress. And so on February 13th, Democratic Senator Bernie Sanders, he formally reintroduced the Social Security Expansion Act to Congress. And at that time, uh, he had a lot more support from fellow lawmakers pushing the initiative. Now, as Go Banking previously reported, the Social Security Expansion Act was first introduced on June 9th, which was about two months ago, um, by Sanders and U.S. Representative Peter DeFazio of Oregon under the terms of the bill that anyone who is a current Social Security recipient or who will turn 62 years old in 2023 would receive an extra $200 each month uh, for their Social Security check, meaning Social Security recipients could get an additional $2,400 a year in benefits if the bill were to win the approval. Something that seniors obviously would no doubtedly, you know, welcome as as inflation is continuing to just wipe out our accounts, making our uh, grocery bills, rents, insurances, and everyday living expenses much, much more expensive to cope with. Now, the latest draft of this bill, it also provides a way forward for the severely underfunded program, which is Social Security. And this is going to affect SSI recipients, SSDI. Um, <clears throat> this is affecting all recipients of Social Security. So that's standard, SS, uh, standard Social Security, SSI, SSDI. As um, And as this latest draft of the bill provides a way forward for the severely underfunded program, it's ensuring that the future generations can receive benefits through 2096 by taxing the highest earners in the country. And um, yeah, so that's their game plan here. Quote, at a time where nearly half of older Americans have no retirement savings and over, and over 50 percent of our nation's seniors are trying to survive on an income of less than $25,000 a year. Our job is not to cut Social Security, end quote. This comes from Senator Bernie Sanders. He went on to say that our job is to expand Social Security so that every senior in America can retire with the dignity that they deserve and every person with a disability can live with the security that they need. The legislation that, uh, that we are introducing today will expand Social Security benefits by $2,400 a year and will extend the solvency of Social Security for the next 75 years by making sure that the wealthiest people in our society pay their fair share into the system. Now, guys, people like me, you know, I'm, I'm a long way away from collecting any kind of Social Security. And if they don't get their act together, it, this could literally be just one of the greatest Ponzi schemes we've ever encountered. I mean, imagine, imagine someone who's, let's just say, 30 years old today, right? And so if they go ahead and do this, if they go ahead and push this uh, full retirement age out to say 70 years old or whatever, right? Um, so let's just say you're 30 years old today. They push out the full, full retirement age to 70 years old. That means you work from 30 to 70. That's another 40 years. And let's just say hypothetically, social security program ran out of cash by that time. That would mean that you have paid into the system, assuming you had been working since you're 18 years old, you would have paid into the system roughly, uh, what's that? 40, 50 years and have got nothing. That would literally be one of the greatest legalized Ponzi schemes that we've ever experienced. And I pray that we don't actually encounter that. I really hope that our congressmen and women get their acts together and, and figure this thing out. Um, so right now, Wall Street CEO who makes $30 million a year, they pay the same amount in the Social Security as someone who makes $160,000 a year. Now, is that fair? I'm not here to really debate that, but it is what it is right now. 
And the law does say that, hey, you know, someone who makes $30 million a year will pay the same amount into Social Security as someone who makes $160,000 per year. Now, here is the question. If they were to, you know, if the federal government, if the White House were to raise Social Security um, rules uh, so that the contributions don't stop at $160,000 a year so that someone earning $30 million a year continues to pay into Social Security, would that be would it be fair for someone who makes $30 million per year to collect, I don't know, 300, maybe even 3,000 times larger a Social Security check compared to someone who um, only earned $50,000 per year? I mean, if their contribution into Social Security is significantly greater, should they get a significantly greater payout from Social Security, even if they don't need it? I'm just saying. I'm just putting it out there. Senator Warren added, quote, as House Republicans try to use a manufactured debt ceiling crisis to cut the Social Security that Americans have earned, I'm working with Senator Sanders to expand Social Security and to extend its solvency by making the wealthy pay their fair share so everyone can retire with dignity. And that came from uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren. Now, President Biden has recently announced intents to nominate Martin O'Malley to be the commissioner of the Social Security Administration. Governor O'Malley, he's a lifelong public servant who has uh, spent his career making government more accessible and transparent while keeping the American people at the heart of his work. Now, as mayor of Baltimore and governor of Maryland, uh, he adopted data and performance driven technologies to tackle complex challenges facing the communities he served. So President Biden feels that uh, Martin O'Malley is a good candidate for this position. I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you guys think? This would be a big shift. This is a big change for Social Security's administration. Um, I don't see that Martin O'Malley has Social Security, uh, a Social Security background per se. So is this a step forward? Is this a step back? Is this a neutral move? Nevertheless, uh, President Biden has... uh, announced his intent to nominate Martin O'Malley to be the commissioner of the SSA or Social Security Administration. We'll see how that plays out. I'll definitely keep you guys posted on that. Uh, Yeah. So uh, he said, quote, "Uh, I I know Martin to be a dedicated public servant who understands the solemn promise of Social Security and how much it means to our seniors and and disability of our survivor beneficiaries. Most important for such a large federal agency, Martin also loves data and has a strong track record making government work better based on that data. So we'll see how that plays out. Definitely going to be interesting. Social Security update. Let's talk about it. We talked about the uh, Social Security uh, direct checks worth up to $4,555, which would be going out to millions in about four days. And so let's talk about that one here, right? And so Millions of retirees are set to receive their first Social Security check worth up to $4,555 for people who delay the retirement until they were in their 70s in less than a week. Now, this first wave of payments is actually scheduled to go out in four days. And so we're looking at Wednesday, August the 9th. To people born between the 1st and the 10th of the month, Social Security income checks are different from regular social security payments. Let me rephrase that. Social security income checks, excuse me, supplemental security income checks are different from regular social security checks, all right? So when we talk about supplemental security income checks, we're talking about SSI. So uh, just note that there is a difference between Social Security payments, the standard Social Security payments, and the supplemental security payment checks, also known as SSI. So a second wave of payments will be sent a week later on August the 16th for those born between the 11th and the 20th of the month. And the final payment will be released August 23rd to those who are born after the 21st. So uh, I hope you guys are paying attention to these dates because these checks are going out. Recipients just get one payment every single month. So that's how it works. Now, let's talk about the recipients who retire at the earliest age of 62. They get the lowest possible monthly installments 
which is up to $2,500. Basically, it's $2,572. That is the most that someone who decided to begin claiming Social Security checks as of age 62 could receive. Now, people who delayed their retirement a little bit and retired at age 67, they're considered the full retirement age as of this recording. Of course, they're trying to change that age. But right now, as of this recording, people who retire at age 67 are considered full retirement age, FRA, and they receive a maximum benefit of $3,627. Now, those who delay their retirement up to 70 years old, which is the oldest age of retirement, they will get the maximum payment of up to $4,555 per month. And this is according to the Social Security Administration. Again, these are separate from SSI payments. These are separate from these uh, supplemental security uh, insurance payments. Now, I want you guys to let me know how many of you guys um, have delayed your Social Security checks or have delayed claiming Social Security until you were 70. And also, while you guys are commenting, when do you think is the smartest time to begin collecting Social Security? Is it, you know, at age 62 as early as you can? Or is it better to maybe take it at full retirement age, say 67? Or are you better off pushing it out even further and wait until you're 70 years old to collect the 4000 almost basically a $4,500 check every single month from the Social Security Administration? You guys let me know what you guys think is the smartest move on that one. But Let's talk about the average net worth of Americans between the age of 65 and 74 years old. Because let's be honest, a lot of people are receiving Social Security, SSI, SSDI checks, and they're just not cutting the mustard. It's not keeping up with inflation. It's not keeping up with rising rents, higher insurance payments, higher property taxes, higher grocery expenses, higher gas prices, you name it, right? And so it makes a lot of sense to ensure that you have additional streams of income as best you can. Um, and that means making some sacrifices earlier in life, uh, cutting back on different, you know, discretionary expenses so that you can contribute to a 401k so that you can open up a Fidelity or an M1 finance or a Vanguard investment brokerage account so that you can invest in, uh, in paper assets such as ETFs, index funds, mutual funds that hopefully and historically have grown in value and compounded money invested into these different types of investments over the long term. And it's helped a lot of people to build wealth. Now, every three years, the Federal Reserve issues the survey of consumer finances to share information about family net worth and income in the United States. Now, the most recent report that came out, it was released in September 2020 using data that was collected in 2019. And it showed that the median U.S. household net worth is $121,700. And so that is the median U.S. household net worth at $121,000. But it is more than double that for people who are between the age of 65 through 6 through 74. So um, I want you guys to just kind of comment down below. And let me know where you guys fall on this. According to the Fed data, the median net worth for Americans in their late 60s and early 70s is $266,400. Now, the average or the mean net worth for this age bracket is $1,217,700. But since averages tend to skew higher due to high net worth households, the median uh, is, is more of a representational amount. So we'll kind of go with that, right? And so, you know, while $266,400 might seem like a lot of money at first, but you got to think about it. People in their 60s, they usually start tapping into their net worth to cover living expenses during their retirement. So how long could $266,000 last you if you're, say, 60 years, 62 years old today and you need to start living off of it, right? It's a serious question you got to look at. And so when you're planning for your non-working years, it's important to understand how net worth works and how it relates to you if you're on a fixed income. Now, obviously, you could live off of $266,000 uh, net worth a lot longer if you're collecting Social Security. And so that's kind of like, you know, subsidizing your, your, your living expenses. But let's talk about the average and the median net worth by age. So here we have uh, the net worth by age. I want to go. I want you guys to take a look at this, and so we can see that the uh, average 
or the household net worth by age, you know, if we're looking at less than 35 years old, your median net worth is sitting at $13,900. Your average net worth is $76,300. Now, if you're between the ages of 35 and 44 years old, your median net worth is $91,300. And your average net worth is $436,200. If you're between the ages of 45 and 54 years old, your median net worth is about $168,600, and your average net worth between the ages of 45 and 54 is uh, $833,200. Now, if you're between the ages of 55 and 64, your median net worth on uh, the median net worth is 600, uh, the median net worth is $212,500 and your average net worth is $1,175,900. Now, once you hit between the ages of 65 and 74 years old, your median net worth is around $266,400, but your average net worth is $1,217,700. Now, if you look at it, once you hit 75 years old and older, you can see that the numbers began to kind of regress a little bit. And so I think that is showing how Americans or uh, households uh, that are over the age of 75 years old are living off of those investments. They're living off of their net worth and it's beginning to decline because they're eating into um, their nest egg. So 75 years old and up, they have a median net worth of $254,800. And we can also see that their average net worth is $977,600. And so this really just kind of drives the point home on how important it is to start investing early. Um, You know, it doesn't have to be M1 Finance, Fidelity or Vanguard. You know, it could be any of your favorite online um, brokerages, but you want to start as early as possible. And, you know, and so the last thing you want to do is outlive your money. That's what you don't want to do. Net worth considerations for retired age people. So like, you know, when you're still working, it's normal to put your net worth out of your mind, at least long enough to take care of more pressing household duties like paying, uh, paying the bills, saving up for future expenses like a house or college education uh, and keeping up with home and car repairs. Right. Um, And, you know, it may seem like another paycheck is always right around the corner. But at some point in time, guys, we're all going to retire. We can't we can't work forever. Or at least I don't think you want to work forever. Maybe I should say that instead. But unfortunately, a lot of Americans, they fall behind and, you know, they fall behind on, you know, day to day expenses. They fall behind on their retirement goals. And so I just want this video to kind of serve as a reminder that, you know, hey, um, we got to make these choices now. It's it's kind of like, you know, I've always been told, use your do what is easy today, like what whatever do what is easy now, because whatever is uh, needing to be done in the future is only going to be harder. And according to retirement plan provider Fidelity Investments, Fidelity is saying that people should have their equivalent of 10 times their income put aside by age 67 to have a comfortable retirement. Now, how many of you guys have 10 percent? How many of you guys have your 10 times your annual income set aside in your investments? So hypothetically, let's say you make $50,000 a year. How many of you guys have $500,000 a year or how how many of you have $500,000 saved up? Whatever happens to be 10 percent of your annual income. If you make $80,000 a year, then you should have $800,000 uh, set aside in your investment accounts, in your brokerage accounts, in your savings account. So I just want you guys to just kind of do a quick self check to see where you stand in comparison to uh, some of the recommended figures from Fidelity Investments. Um, so this means a, a lot of people should build up a net worth of about five hundred and fourteen thousand two hundred eighty dollars, based on the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics median American earnings data. So, uh, and, and although some experts suggest that you actually need a million dollars or more to retire comfortably. So you might be thinking, well, what makes up your net worth, right? So, you know, the net worth is simply all of your assets that you own minus any liabilities or debt, right? And so, 
uh, liabilities or debt. That's like your car. Uh, maybe you have a car note, maybe an outstanding car loan, whatever outstanding mortgage balance there is on your house, any kind of credit card debt, student loans, that kind of stuff, right? Now, um, assets, uh, especially in this particular study, uh, the Federal Reserve listed a number of different assets that qualify in their uh, assessment to determine net worth. So that would include cash. Uh, at, clearly, cash is an asset. Uh, so cash within bank accounts, such as your checking account, savings account, money market accounts, etc. You got your prepaid debit cards, CDs, savings bonds, uh, government bonds, uh, health savings accounts, any kind of investment accounts you have, including 529 college savings plans and individual taxable investment accounts. You got your retirement accounts, including IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, uh, life insurance policies with a cash value, annuities with equities, vehicles, including cars, RVs, motorcycles, boats, helicopters. You got real estate including rental homes and primary and uh, residential homes. Uh, and so that is how we calculate net worth. So now that you understand that, you can calculate your own net worth and see where you stand. So anyway, guys, I, I really hope that this information is, is valuable to you. And uh, let me know what you found to be the most interesting uh, part of our discussion today. Drop me some comments down below. If you made it this far, please consider dropping a like for the video. Also consider subscribing to the channel. And I'm going to see you guys on the next one.